food. Wild food, that's what hunting and gathering is all about. This is a journey into Britain's ancient way of life as we attempt to find the foods eaten by our hunter-gatherer ancestors. I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world studying how indigenous people manage to make their livings with just what nature will provide them. But one thing that has always frustrated me is how little we know about our own ancestors, the people who hunted and gathered here in Britain. My partner on this journey is Professor Gordon Hillman of University College London. He spent his life studying how people have used plants throughout history. Our landscape is rich in history, waiting for archaeologists to uncover. Within it are clues of what our past might have been. But archaeology isn't the only way to find out. So in this program, I want to do something different. I want to take you somewhere the hunter-gatherer lifestyle still survives in all its vibrant, exciting glory. literally to the other side of the planet in our quest to understand more about British wild foods. This is the Tanami Desert in the centre of Australia. We've come here to see the cultural relationship that the Aboriginals here have with their wild foods, or as they call them, bush tucker. We're on our way to meet up with some people from the Walpuri tribe. But before we start, I think an initiation is in order. Gordon can't travel with me and expect to get off scot-free. Well, Gordon, you know, we can't come to Australia without looking for one particular bush tucker. Oh, dear. I have a horrible feeling about what's coming. <laughs> That's exactly right. We're looking for witchetty grubs. And these... Uh, I thought that was going to be a... These are witchetty bushes. Oh, right. Gordon's worked all over the world but he's never seen hunter-gatherers in action. This is the most iconic Aboriginal food. It's also particularly wriggly. So, I obviously parallel for Britain, in that we've got plenty of insects there that are uh, quite big and juicy. Exactly. I mean, I, I think part of coming here is to open our minds to the possibilities of what our ancestors may have been using. Indeed. I don't know if you can see this, Gordon, but you can see there where some of these bits of soil where things have emerged oh, from yes, underground. Oh yes, where the adult forms are cascading from pupation. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. It must be close. Um, uh, oh, there oh, it is. Oh wow. Gordon, you can tease that out with a little stick look. Oh, I see, that's right. They go into the roots and the roots swell oh, right. around them. Right. They're delicious, they're really, really not. I like them. Mm -hmm. Can you get hold of it? Yep. You should get hold of it. Okay. I'm not going to eat the head end. No, you hold the head. I hold and the you head. You bite the rest off oh. on the head. Okay, two. Look at that. You hold the head. Hold okay. the head like between your fingers like that. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They're nice. A bit of leaf. No, 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 I like them. Egg yolk flavour. Yeah, they're good. With a touch of, touch of fruitiness to it. Everybody's really squeamish about them, but they're delicious yes, and they, they're they very, very satisfying. Delicious. I don't know if I'd want to live on it, but it's, it is, I can, you can sense it's nutritious, certainly, your body tells you. There you go, you see how they are, that one's all curled up in there, doesn't want to come out. Just break them and pull them out. You've got to turn narrow. They're beautiful, yeah. Like that. Interesting. Oh, that's good. Mm. 
Took my pen, number. These days, the Walpuri spend much of their time in town, in Alice Springs. But they regularly return to the country, and there's plenty of room in our car. What name have you given, Gordon? Jumalai. Jumalai. He's a tango dreaming rock wallaby dream. <laughs> He's always hopping around. <laughs> and Gordon's got three wives. <laughs> This is Walpuri land, where they traditionally hunted kangaroo and wallaby and gathered wild plants. Just one generation ago, they used to roam this country, living off only what they found and creating temporary camps along the way. We're going to be staying here a couple of days before moving on to another part of Australia. One of the Aboriginal women said to me a few minutes ago, she came over and goes, really good to be here on the land and that's something they feel really deep inside and I'm feeling that too it's a long while since I've been to Australia out in the desert but it's exciting to be here can you just hold that there for me Gordon okay. just come out here I'll just tie it around this termite mound Gordon this is a great way to camp. A bit of shade and a bedroll is all that I need. That's good. We won't undo this yet. Don't want anything to crawl in them. <laughs> For Noreen and the other ladies, home is even simpler. A patch of clear ground and a fire. Ready for a brew, Gordon? Well, that sounds great, Ray. Good job. What do you get moving? I'll bring it over. Well, and what's your impression so far? I'm just amazed at the richness for them here. There's so many, not only is there quite a lot of, uh, of, of, of plant cover, it's just so, there's so much of it that's usable. Yeah, and what's exciting for me is knowing your, your botanical knowledge and your archaeological knowledge is for you to see how these sorts of people think about their landscape and how they actually work with the plants and the food resources themselves. Very exciting prospects. Very exciting indeed. Gordon and I are mainly interested in plant use in Aboriginal Britain. Whilst animals at least leave bones to give archaeologists something to study, very little work has been done on the subject of plants, as the remains have mostly rotted away. We've got problem. Yeah. Number nine, yeah. That looks promising. Yeah, there was one there. There's bush potatoes there. In Australian yeah. Aboriginal culture, it's the women who gather the plants while the men go hunting. So it's the women who hold the knowledge Gordon and I are after. I have good beans later on. No, 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 no. What they found is what they call wanakichi, wanakichi, which is the bush tomato. It's in the um, nightshade family, a solanum. And you can see there from the flowers, reminiscent of uh, woody nightshade back in the UK. Audrey singing like this is typical of these people. Each food has its own song. It's a sign